Hi. Hey, good afternoon, guys. How are you doing? Good afternoon. We're good. Thank you so much for joining us, Ryan, and Hi, for everyone who's sort of watching uh, today and, and forward. Um, this is Ryan, the artistic director of Inverish Theatre Company. And we're so excited to have you here. We've seen your work before, and um, I mean, we both can agree it's extremely powerful at the same time as being very, you know, entertaining and engaging. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, we're ready to kick off. We're excited to, to talk to you. <laughs> so, um, so for everybody watching, um, who is Nouveau Riche and what kind of work do uh, you and your company kind of aim to put out there? Cool. Um, cool, man. So um, we are Nouveau Riche. We're, um, we're still an emerging company. We came about with our first show in 2017. This is our third year now. Um, and we kind of came about just from the frustration of kind of waiting for something to happen for us in the industry. We were kind of like a lot of people were talking about, um, you know, lack of opportunities for um, black and minority artists in the industry. And we were kind of like, we're tired of complaining about it. We are creative, so it's kind of weird if we can't create work, you know? So it was a case of going, cool, we don't really know anything about the business side, but let's just look at the kind of work we want to do. So we came together for about six months and we were looking at kind of stories that were local to us in our communities, but had a kind of uh, national and international appeal. We were like, yo, this kind of stuff is happening down here, but it's not unique to just us, you know, anybody else can relate to this. And then in general, the kind of stories we look at are stuff that um, are topical. And we look at how, how best we can tell that story. So we never ever come up with an idea of how that story is going to be told until we kind of get in a room and we yeah. kind of go, okay, cool. Let's look at this as its own bespoke individual thing. And um, let's really like just tear it apart and rot it and see what we can get out of that. And that's kind of how we work, man. Um, we kind of look at loads of different art forms from around the world as well. We go, what can we do that's, that's, that's unique that we, haven't been, that we haven't seen before? And we put all those ingredients together. And um, yeah, most time it works out really good. <laughs> that's what we, that's what we kind of do. So we've been doing it for three years, yeah. And this is our third year now. Where um, so the first year we were kind of like, okay, we need to get the local community on side and make sure that people know that we are a community-based um, company. And then the second year was kind of okay, let's kind of prove to ourselves that we have work that is good enough to take um, around the country. You know, let's prove that to ourselves first and foremost. And then the third year, this year was meant to be um, international, so go outside of the company and country, which um, we're still hoping to do somehow. We've had conversations with people, so that's, all, that's a start. But, you know, um, yeah, it will happen. <laughs> it's just a bit delayed. So, it's yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so um, sorry, what did you say? It's all about the, the connection. So you never know when exactly. you're making the next connection to sort of exactly. international, yeah. even online. So. Yeah, no, it's been really good via Zoom. You know, there's, there's been a lot of time to have meetings with people that you just wouldn't have usually. Yeah, you know, of it's, it's made the world a lot smaller in that sense. We've had incredible meetings with people from all over the world. So, yeah, I think that's where we're at right now. Um, and we're doing some stuff um, online. Just trying to get our head around that. I think for us, we just want to be in a room, but we're trying to see how much stuff we can kind of like put out online now and just keep people's like appetite, you know, yes. going. I completely understand. So you guys were aiming to tour um, internationally with a particular show? or Yeah, so um, we were looking to, so we just did a national tour of um, our like flagship show, uh, Queens of Sheba, that went to Edinburgh in 2018. Mm -hmm. They just did a national, sold out national tour, 10 venues last year. Yeah. And we were talking to a few companies about um, touring that internationally. Uh, it would have probably been end of this year slash 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some other projects as well that we were looking to kind of team up with some um, international companies as well. So the conversations are still there. It's just um, trying to adjust to this new crazy world, right? Yeah, fair enough. Completely nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. I think it's just mainly sort of about keeping those relationships, you know, alive and, and, yeah. and conversation going and then sort of just pushing yourselves to I guess maybe, you know, again keep stay motivated but also being compassionate at the same time. Exactly. I think that this is, you know, yes. Yeah. 
yeah. a time we could never have expected. Really. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy time. So many companies and venues, you know, are just are, are falling by the wayside, you know. So it's it's really it's crazy to see. It's crazy yeah. to see. Yeah. Do you guys have um? There's a, there's a core company involved, and do you work with the same? Do you bring people in, or do you always work with the same? People? Yeah. So we have a core company of about four of us at the moment. Um, so we have like an artistic director myself we have two creative um, directors and a production manager and then everybody else is um, associates so we bring in I think what we do as well is because all of our because our work is so um, unique you know to the subject matter for me it just made sense on bringing in artists that were specific for those types of projects rather than having people going ah that's not my forte just going okay I know a, um, a director or a choreographer that specialises in what, what, what our next pro production is around. Um, yeah, and it helped us as a young company as well to keep costs down. You know, instead of having people just waiting around, just being paid, it was a case of going, no, when we have a project, we can bring in people, make sure everybody gets paid project by project because we don't have any core funding. Um, so it made it allowed us to continue to work in that kind of process, you know, and it meant that we could actually have more than one project um on at the same time that's great you know? it sounds really great to sort of it seems like you have a rep to have these you know four or five shows that you can sort of tour around exactly and have that, you know, existing at the same time that's yeah, that's yeah. so last september we had queens of sheba that was going around the country and then we had a show called typical that was at soho that yeah. was playing every night and they were both happening at the same time we were like this was this was the master plan that we had from the beginning you know <laughs> it, was, it was published like you know like to the film, if I'm not yeah 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 had richard blackwood in it um from tv the guy from tv but <laughs> <laughs> so cool. no. well, that was a really really good experience i enjoyed it so much yeah That's Right. that's so good so on to the next question second question Ryan so um, as, a, as a company has there been something during this time that sort of stuck out to you as individuals uh, in the sense of an event or something maybe you've seen online as well or seen from other companies um, something that has stuck up stuck out and sort of kept you going and kept you motivated during this time because obviously we know that it's been it's been a, it's been a weird yeah I think um I think just kind of having like audience feedback, I think for us personally, is something that drives us to continue to do it. I think after the success of like the first two shows, everybody kind of got to a place where the industry was kind of like, okay, now come and do this for us and us and us. And I feel like a lot of companies in that moment kind of go, okay, cool. Nouveau Riche was fun, but now let's go on to some bigger stuff. And I think for us, it was always about why we put this company together because of the, um, how it affects other people. So, for instance, we have um, we had so many. We had almost a thousand messages when Queens of Sheba um, toured. You know, from people that were just like, "This really touched my soul. I needed this. I needed a story like this." And then we had two schools that just did Queens of Sheba for their um, their GCSE uh, productions, right? Wow. <laughs> wow. So when, yeah. So when you have stuff like that happen, you go, okay, there's a bigger picture here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like people are really, it's really changing, doing what we set out to do. Do you know what I mean? It's allowing people to feel visible. Yeah. And I can imagine like we had a message from one of those teachers that were like, I was finding it so hard to engage with a lot of the young girls in our class. And when we read Queens of Sheba, no, when they saw Queens of Sheba, they were like, finally, there's something that speaks to me. I want to do that, you know? And they got, all of them got amazing, amazing scores for their drama GCSEs. Wow. But it was like, okay, cool. There's an, do you know, there's an importance to the work we do. We have to continue to do it. And I think that's kind of um, driven us, especially in a time like now where there's no money around, there's no certainty that there's even going to be an industry. And you're like, man, like the amount of people I've spoken to that have gone, yeah, I'm just going to go get a job in Tesco. It's like, I'm just like, I'm done with this. I'm going to go and do my law degree. I'm going to finish my degree <laughs> because, you know, there's no guarantee. But for us, it's kind of like, no, like regardless, it's not just about us being on stage and doing stuff. It's about the education that comes with the work that we do that even if theatres were burnt down, you know, we would find another way of being able to get those stories out. Yeah, that's really that really makes me think i think that sometimes and then i think for us because obviously i don't want to speak for other companies but for us some, something that i think really resonates with what you're saying is the aspect of there's so much more to the work than just the performance yeah the, and, and i think being reminded 
of that and sort of actually some of the most rewarding experiences that we've had as much as our the creation of performances and the performances themselves mm -hmm. is also number one the feedback and also the ability to go into other spaces even with our workshops for example we've traveled into schools recently and it's funny because you end up leaving and you learn so much from from the kids as well mm -hmm. and about you as a not just as a, as an artist but also as a practitioner yeah and that is so useful 100 percent contributes yeah. so much to sort of the work you do then in the room yeah. um just for those who don't know and uh, maybe anything about queen of sheba because it's yeah. so interesting that it was something you know used in gcse currently yeah 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 just sort of just a, maybe a one line, two lines. Sort of yeah. Um, so basically, it's a show that is about it, it touches upon um, uh, racism and sexism. And for us, it was a unique subject matter because there was so much work about racism, there was so much work about sexism, but there was not, nothing that kind of put the two together, you know? And it was based on an incident that happened in 2015 at a district nightclub where four black women were turned away for being too overweight and too dark. And we looked at that subject matter and we were like, that is crazy. And then so many black women were kind of like, yeah, this happens all the time. And we were like, okay, cool. We need to have some type of response to this. Like writing something on Twitter is not enough. Like we need an actual response. So that's how we got to work on that show. And uh, yeah, it just keeps resonating and resonating. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially during these times, I'm sure. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, congratulations. I also, what you, sorry, sorry. You mm. Oh, I was saying what, what you were saying about schools as well, like obviously like so important that with all these arts cuts, I mean, this was even pre-COVID, like mm -hmm. all these arts cuts to schools, um, I think, and I could be um, generalizing here, but then because of cuts, the curriculum um, becomes very simple and kind of one-sided um, yeah. from my experience anyway, I don't know, but and, you know, going to theatre trips might not be viable. And the fact that, like, those kids were able to see your work and feel represented. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is like, wow. Like, that, like, I got, like, um, <laughs> what's it called? Like, goosebumps. Like, yeah, goosebumps. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's two, yeah. might just be two schools, but that is two schools and a group of kids who have seen themselves represented and seen themselves represented in the arts. Yeah. And that, yeah, yeah. You know, that's so, so like, bravo for that, because yeah, that's like, especially. that's yeah. Yeah. And you're also yeah, educating, I, I, educating people on some subject they may not necessarily have known about. I read something the other day, teach your, mm. teach your kids um, what you learn late, early. Mm. And that might be a bit the perfect opportunity, you know, for something that they might not have had those conversations. Exactly. You know, with like their exactly. peers, their classmates, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Oh. Brilliant. Wow, yeah. As <laughs> <laughs> you can move swiftly on to the third question, I think, because it like really fits in well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for New Race, obviously you're already doing like incredible work, but in terms of sort of dreams, what what are they? So like either kind of at the moment and post this uh COVID yeah. era, or even like you can go whole hog long term yeah. <laughs> like big dreams because like that's always so fun to talk about in here so yeah what yeah. are your dreams i think for us i think the first thing is to be able to do the work that we want to do i think do you know what I, mean? I think that's the immediate dream is to get back into a rehearsal room and to uh, and to and to be told that we can go on stage and create the work we want to in the way that we want to that would be really great i think um a little bit more long term i think for us we want to be a renowned um international company you yeah. know i think i want what we want is we want to be able to take work like i was saying earlier on that's local and show that it is as good as any work from anywhere in the world and i think you know i've never really seen that done from um a company in my community to have the kind of confidence and the boldness to to be able to go yeah you know we are one of the best at what we do um yeah, on a on on the bigger scale, you know, I want to be able to see our shows in you know Zimbabwe, or in New York, in Chicago, Canada. You know, I feel like I feel like the ambition's there, yeah. and I feel like we, we've we've got so many young um, emerging artists that are incredibly talented, and we go, you know what, the industry's missed on you guys, but we haven't, you know, we're going to push this. So uh, yeah, that's our that's our kind of immediate goals and dreams. Yeah, wow. I think they sound 
fab. <laughs> yeah. It also sounds really, really doable, I think, in a sense. Yeah. Sort of, as, a, as an energy. Yeah. We've just sort of met virtually. <laughs> the ambition and the confidence is there. Yeah. And in a, in a very sort of rooted, um, in a rooted place, you know. So I, I'm convinced that you will, you will get there. Bless <laughs> so, you, man. Bless you. <laughs> Two people down. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure we'll the rest of the there. world. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And I think what you said about the voices um, aspect, you know, it's so it's so true. I mean, you sort of feel. I think we've had this discussion multiple times. I apologize for the. Can you hear the grass being? Not too, it's not too loud. Okay. Yeah. Someone yeah. cut the grass in the park. <laughs> um. It literally, we talk, we have the same conversations on sort of a different level as, and I'm originally from Malta, and I find that even to find sort of my place within the industry as a, yeah. like even finding certain like casting is always quite hard to navigate because obviously the roles are, I guess, few and far between. And one of the reasons why we started the company was also because of that. We were sort of really wanting to be able to find a space and fit in and do stuff yeah. we really wanted to do and talk about things we really wanted to talk about in our bigger mold. Mm -hmm. And I think as smaller sort of companies, we have maybe, I guess the duty, but also the privilege of mm -hmm. being able to, you know, sort of like play hide and seek and find like all of these artists that might necessarily get lost underneath this big, massive industry exactly. where there are all these parts. We have the opportunity to find those who, yeah. You know, the incredible artists that exist, but yeah. just unfortunately aren't being represented for whatever reason. Exactly, exactly. Okay, and then the final question is really um, to talk about maybe any work you guys have done during um, during this COVID scenario. Mm. You mentioned there were the Mad Times, Mad Times monologues. Yeah, so we had a um, monologue competition for, um, what was it? It was artists and writers of colour. So we had a competition that ran for a couple, about a month. And um, it, it finished in the end of May. And it was um, a monologue called um, No More Mr. Nice Guy by Kalai Janelle, which um, was incredibly funny. Um, <laughs> about, <laughs> about a black guy that just had enough. He just had enough of being nice. He just had enough of, uh, do you know what I mean, simulating and being Mr. PC. And um, what was really good as well was being able to engage, you know, almost over a thousand people were voting online watching all of these artists monologues, you know, and we were like, okay, what a brilliant way of just getting people noticed. Mm. That was the most, uh, you know, and then being able to have a bit of money aside to give him um, a seed commission to kind of get some ideas together. And I think that was really, really good for us to be able to go, wow, like we worked to a position where we can start giving people money to do what they want to do. Um, you know, no holds bar, like just, just be able to put all your ideas down, uh, have a, has a little bit of money, and I think that was one of the biggest things for us during COVID. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're waiting to see what happens with that. Um, Can you still watch the monologues online? Yes. If you go to our YouTube um, channel, if you just put Nouveau Reach Theatre and go into our YouTube, all, the, all eight of the finalists are still online that's to be viewed and to be enjoyed. So, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing at the moment. We're working with that. And like I was saying before, working on getting a couple of our productions um, online which would be really, really good because they're, they're good, man. They're good stuff. They're good stuff. And we're looking to work with more artists over the next few months um, in terms of doing, like, um, get some associate artists that are going to be working with some venues. So please do look out for us on our um, socials, uh, NVRCHUK. They're all the same on Twitter, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Amazing and Instagram. Okay, can we yeah. have that one more time? Because I spoke over you. Oh, sorry, no worries. Um, N V R C H U K. Amazing, great. And if people can also uh, view your website, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is um, N V N V C N V R C H <laughs> dot com. <laughs> great. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for. Bless you guys. Today, Ryan, it's been, it's been a real pleasure. And hopefully, okay. we will definitely check out the monologues, and hopefully, many others will too. Um, and we look forward to seeing more work from the Boris soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.